This week had us on our toes. The wind has shifted, so we're on the lee shore now. So there's a boat out here trying to come into this anchorage. They are stuck. They ran aground. So we're going to go try and get them off. And the sister ships gather for an impromptu meetup to compare notes and celebrate accomplishments. It's awesome. been a hell of a year. We didn't give up. Happy one year anniversary to have place. And from one extreme to another, could you live on this for a month? Or this? Or this? So. Can you sleep all the way? Can you spread out all the way? How okay, long is this? Two, two births, yeah. I gotta say, after checking these out and going for a sale, it's got us rethinking the real meaning of freedom. It's not a long trip. We're just crossing the Chesapeake Bay to get over to the eastern side, and we're headed for the Y River. I think our total mileage today will probably be under 20 miles. So we're not getting out the Code Zero, we're not getting out the Spinnaker, we're just gonna jive back and forth. It's just so peaceful out here and relaxing. It's nice not having any place to go very quickly. Just getting the engines warmed up. We're gonna head upriver into a tight little cove. Well, we're gonna find a spot that's completely sheltered so we can get out on the paddle boards and explore around. A lot of wildlife in this area, so yeah. Wildlife and big fancy houses. There's some really expensive real estate in the area. That house takes up the entire peninsula. Oh, it's gorgeous. This is not new money. This is wealth that goes back for hundreds of years. Turns out this is an area steeped in rich history. It's all public land now, but this is some of the oldest tobacco plantation farmland in the United States and those crops were cultivated using slave labor. One of the key figures in the abolitionist movement was Frederick Douglass, and before escaping to freedom, he was enslaved at the Y Plantation. Doing. I'm just chilling out in this awesome bay, drinking coffee. I feel like if we got you like a blue guitar, you'd be in a music video. Or a blue flute. A blue flute. <laughs> Megan is still dressed for summer with her... High mermaid. For the first time this season, I'm going sweatpants. And not just sweatpants. I dug out Cheech and Chong. wind has shifted so we're on the lee shore now and we just noticed there's a boat out here trying to come into this anchorage at dividing creek and they are stuck they ran aground it's really shallow right there so we're gonna go try and get them off just gonna give these guys a little hand maybe catch them off
next morning at dawn, a strange ship appeared on the horizon. Unable to resist its cuteness, we had to investigate. Spied this cute little gaff rigged yawl coming in. Did I get it right? It is a gaff rigged yawl. Wanna come on board? Sure. And what's your name? Uh, my name is Steve Early. Hey, Steve. My boat's called Spartina. I'm Nick. That's Megan. What's her measurement? 17 4 length on deck, 19 if you throw in the bow sprit. The uh, beam is 6 6 draft. It's a foot with the board down. It's about 3 feet. I've got four weeks. I'll go down to Tangier Sound, Western Shore, work my way up to the top of the bay, Chesapeake City, Sassafras River, Bohemia River, and then back down to uh, Chester. This is a seven foot, uh, two inch flat area. So my feet go up there, head and shoulders go here. I've got a uh, inflatable sleeping pad. I've got, and you saw the boom tent. You can zip it closed with a mosquito mesh. I, I carry three of those little uh, solar power bricks and uh, a little charger, but I, I'm usually in port, you know, every four to five days. And Back to the apartment. All right, nice to have met you. Uh, nice to meet and, you. Uh, maybe we'll see each other in St. Michael's. I think we will. enough messing around we've been here in dividing creek with barely enough internet to uh, operate we need the big city of st michael's we have a video to upload whoop, whoop. we went from summer to fall winter in one cold front i got the fleece pants i'm not ready for this i don't know how many days i was sweating my off down in the engine room thinking gosh it was only cooler and now i'm like I got the gloves. Sadly, this is all I have. So if it gets much colder, I'm in trouble. here in St. Michael's and I'm so excited to go do laundry and shopping with our friends Joyce and Matt. It's so perfect that we timed their shopping and laundry day <laughs> because we need it bad. It's beautiful here and we got one of the small little spots here in Fog Cove. Fog Cove with two G's. Is that like Phileas Fog I wonder? Yeah it's a gorgeous spot. St. Michael's is like one of the uh, tourist hubbub centers which normally you know we try and avoid but it's midweek and uh, the charts say that this is usually filled with boats here got it to ourselves well, I guess there's one other boat over here well, we're gonna get some errands done and get your video uploaded <laughs> all right here we go All three loads almost done here and got the sheets, towels, everything. While Megan was making sure that we wouldn't go hungry, I took care of our routine engine checks. And when I looked up, we'd been invaded by little boats. I was really curious to learn more about these boats and who sails them and where? And what's your name? Uh, my name's Steve Warple. So is this like a weekend thing? So the, the Mid-Atlantic Small Craft Festival is a festival they've been running here for a long time, long before I started coming in 2011. So I, I launched over at Sandy Point State Park. I don't know if you know what that is over at the other, I don't. End, the other end of the uh, Chesapeake Bay above Annapolis. And then I've been living on this thing since then. And, and uh, <laughs> 
but it's nice because you can trailer it and you know you don't I can you know a big boat you know it's like you're in the marina unless you're like you guys and have the time to, to go out this makes this allows me to see some different sailing water it has the capacity to go for seven to ten days without having to put in anywhere and of course with a 10 inch craft yeah pull it up anywhere so I can take enough ice and food and cold drinks for a week we can carry 20 gallons of water can you spread out all the way how long is this there's two berths yeah you're certainly not going to be crossing any oceans on these little boats but for an adventure what more do you really need a seaworthy boat a chart a compass and a bit of time i mean what boat review would be complete without actually <laughs> sailing the boat <laughs> steve is very kindly volunteer to take me for a ride on his boat and uh, this thing is just darling. The only concern I have is <laughs> we don't have much wind. Start blowing. <sighs> Good, how are you doing? Have fun you guys. <laughs> and so watch your head. How long did it take you to build it? About uh, 20 months. So this is the first one you built, or you built I built a, uh, my dad and I built a kit boat, and then we did a really simple stitch and glue boat. And then, uh, and then I did this. My dad came back to help me with the mass, and by that time I had daughter. It wasn't five minutes on Spartina before I was transported back to when I fell in love with sailing. And not just pulling on the strings and going from A to B, but talking boats and sailing. And I noticed just about everybody's gaff or a cat rig. It's very traditional here. Yeah, the small boat people, there's a lot of uh, sprit rigs, uh, lug rigs. So, you know, a lot of the more popular plants are very traditional. Got a lot of flotation, it looks like. Yeah, that's one of the things that appealed to me with the, with the two young daughters. I wanted to take them sailing. I wanted a safe boat. And uh, so under all the flat areas, except for here, it's all positive flotation all the way forward. And uh, it's a safe boat. Yeah, last winter, I guess last Late February, I drove down to Charleston. My plan was to sail the ICW from Charleston to um, Jacksonville. And I made it two thirds of the way, and then in a hard drive, I snapped off my uh, mizzen mast. So that's all right, I'll do it again this winter. They're hollow masts. What? Yeah. It takes breaks. gear on that, that would be tough it, it probably with the gear on it probably weighs over a thousand pounds and uh, but I can usually find you know with the with the board up and the draft less than a foot I can usually find a creek somewhere I can tuck into uh, it doesn't take much space I'm not very happy with it it's a tidy boat I was by this big spoil island, and I thought it was a cloud of smoke or something. I was like, wow, look at that. That's really interesting. And I started thinking, I know that island. Turns out we were anchored right in front of the Inn at Perry cabin, which is where they filmed the hilarious movie Wedding Crashers. I told you this would be classy, right? Yes, you did. Class. First mm. class all the way. You were not lying. We were also a stone's throw away from the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum. The small boat collection includes crabbing skiffs, work boats, and log canoes. There are 12 exhibition buildings all along the waterfront, as well as a floating fleet of historic boats. 
These historic watercraft are maintained by shipwrights and their apprentices in the working shipyard. In 2019, the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum was selected to build a new Maryland Dove. The Dove is a reproduction of one of the vessels that brought many of the first European settlers to Maryland in 1634. And it's expected to be completed in early 2022. Megan's restaurant is serving. Have pork missing, yeah, it's a cafe. And, Megan, uh, table number three is getting cafe, a Lancy. We have <laughs> chocolate wow. keto cake. Oh happy, happy one year anniversary to have you. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's been a hell of a year. That's it's awesome. been a hell of a year. We didn't give up. We didn't give up. No, it's ever. been a hell of a year, but we did not give up. Well done, you guys. The best is yet to come. Yes. yes. Cheers. We had a wonderful day off visiting with friends on our leopard meetup. It was so cool to have three leopard 46s to hang out on in one day. Yeah, it was weird being on the other sister ships because it's like it's, it's our boat. It's different, different yeah. colors and different fabrics. And it's like our boat in a different mood. You yeah. know? <laughs> it's like this seems really familiar, but it's also... like they're children. They're like siblings. Or it's like it's like being on your boat in a dream, where you're like, yeah, it's like my boat, but it's not. <laughs> it was so cool, and uh, yeah, thanks to Donna, Dave, and Vanessa, and Ed. Don't forget Peter and Kathy. And Peter and Kathy came out. They live right around the. Brought us some food. That was so Thanks, sweet. guys. Yeah, thank you all, and we'll see you again soon.